Good eye guys, my name's Miles. And my name's Fares. And this is the commodity and today we are reacting to Confused Canadian Investigates Australian English. This video was requested to us by three people. Steel Fabric requested this at 9.49 a.m. yesterday. Potato Jafaraza suggested this February the 17th. And Majestic AF suggested this in August of last year. And we are just now seeing potatoes in Majestic AF's steel fabric. They should think... I'm kidding. Well, thank you guys thank for... all of you. All you bloody wankers, we thank you for... I'm just kidding, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Thank yeah, you so, so much for these uh, suggestions. So, yeah, this is the first time I've seen this in the suggestion area of the Discord. In the description, though, I was a little weary about watching it. I was like, I was like, hmm. So we're going to be reacting to a Canadian reacting to... Because Canadians are different accent. already to... Right. Uh, uh, but to, uh, I looked in the, Americans. the description and it says, In this video, I do my best to make sense of the Australian English and some of its most interesting features. So I think he's going to go over, like, the history of it or something. Or maybe. he's trying to understand what the hell they're trying to say in Australia. Yeah. All right. Well, guys, before we hop into this video, if you would, go ahead and give us a thumbs up. It truly helps a made out in getting these videos out to more people. Also, if you would, go ahead and click that subscribe button and the bell notification icon that we guys can stay informed on our future videos. And if you'd like to help support the channel even more and get an exclusive, exclusive, exclusive YouTube short shout out, exclusive. click the join button down below. It's that exclusive. Exclusive. <laughs> You're weird. I know. When you think of Australia, you might think of kangaroos, koalas, or premium Australian beer, like Foster's Lager. Foster's. Sorry, Aussies. But another thing you might think of is the distinct Australian way, or ways, of speaking English. The story of Australian English begins with the arrival of European settlers in Australia in 1788. Convicts from Britain and Ireland were exiled. Their heads are so much bigger than theirs. I think that's derogatory <laughs> drawings. Yeah to New South Wales, which was founded as an overseas penal colony. They weren't all ruthless criminals, mind you. Many of them were only guilty of theft, and some of them were children. Over 160,000 convicts were sent there over the next 80 years, mainly working class people from the major cities of England, as well as Scotland, Wales, and Ireland. It seems so expensive. There were also many free settlers who joined them. The significance of this is that people speaking different English dialects from all over Britain and Ireland were essentially thrown together in the same I place where they had to it. learn yeah. to understand one another. Remember, back then there was no radio or television to familiarize people with different accents. In order to understand each other well, they had to learn to speak in a way that was less regional. This resulted in dialect leveling. Dialectal variations were removed from their speech. You could say that the core of Australian English is a compromise between the various regional dialects of Britain That's and really Ireland. Cool and since about. then, Australian English has but developed... I have a kind of an argument with that reason. I mean, I could be way off. But wouldn't American English fall in the same category? We're British. I mean, granted, over time... So when we came over from uh, England and Scotland and Irish and Wales and all those different areas, we all came from the... The British Isles, mm -hmm. like over here, and then our our accents changed to what we have now. Is that because of other cultures coming over? Like we had a lot of Africans, we had a lot of uh, Europeans, we have a lot of Asians. Is that where our language changed here, as opposed to sounding more like an Australian or even British or any of the British Isles? I don't know. But that makes it's sense, It's a really right? cool concept to think of, though, that, like, all these convicts were sent to this one continent. And right, right. No, no, no. But does, And they but, had to blend their shiz together. Yeah, and it became an... Yeah, and it just became its own thing. Yeah, That's cool. But do you not disagree with my, my concept, my idea? I can't disagree with either of them because yeah. they, both, they both make sense. So, I wonder. Maybe somebody here is a... Uh, a, dialect a linguist expert. or a dialect or whatever. Maybe you understand why we have our accent versus Australian accents or British accents. Own features, or... words, and expressions. It has also been influenced by additional waves of immigration since the days of the penal colony ended. 
There are basically three varieties of Australian English, broad, general, and cultivated Australian English. They essentially form an accent continuum, with the speaker's accent depending mostly on whether they grew up in a rural area or an urban area, their socioeconomic background, and perhaps the kind of subculture they identify with. Broad Australian English has the features that people outside of Australia tend to associate with Australian English. You know, when they think of Steve Irwin, the crocodile Oi. hunter, or maybe Oi. Paul Hogan and Crocodile Dundee. And just a word of warning, Australians never say this. Throw another shrimp on the barbie. Unless they're taking the piss out of you. Piss. Taking the piss. Is an expression used in Britain and Australia that means to make fun of someone or mess with them. It's not used in North American English. I'm Canadian and I sometimes use it, but that's because I've picked it up from some Aussie friends of mine. Here are a few examples of broad Australian English that you'll probably only hear in rural areas or maybe amongst older people or amongst, um, is it politically correct to say ochres and bogans? Yeah, nah. Yeah, nah. Does that mean no? Nah, yeah. If you guys haven't seen our last Australian video, go check it out. It after goes this. over that. It goes, but when they say it like this, the way that they said it in that last video that we're talking about, it was hard to understand. But I've heard even this used in movies. No, I mean, we don't use it here. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that. But I've heard that used. We use it if we're being sarcastic. Yeah. Like, no. Yeah. yeah. Like, we'll say, yeah, no. I'm not doing that. Or we'll be like, yeah, of course, you can have it. Yeah. No. Nah. <laughs> you do Women that a lot, sometimes actually. sometimes referred yeah. to as Sheila's. Yeah. Somehow that one particular name, Sheila, came to represent women in general. For example, if I say, hey, man, where's Liam? In theory, I might get this reply. Uh, he's over there having a chat with some Sheila. It's truth. She's Struth. a bit of a looker. Struth is used as an interjection to show surprise. It actually originated in the UK and is a contraction of God's truth. The way truth. I took that was, now it's, it's the truth. The same here. <laughs> it's truth. So I thought Sheila was kind of derogatory at this point. No, I, I've always understood that it was just a way to call all, just kind of categorizing female. Well, because I've said, I said Sheila in a, in a previous video, it was probably like six or seven videos ago. And somebody said, we don't really use that anymore. Well, that's somebody ain't woke. But is, is that, too woke is that, or something? Is that, I don't like, know. Is it derogatory or? But what I understand from all all of the comments or all the videos that we've done, and then the comments within it, Sheila just is a a, a generalization of female. Like, oh, he's over there talking to some Sheila, and and then me mates. Yeah. Could I don't know? Is it could a mate be a female? If if it's within a group of people, yes. Okay. Oh, it's used much more in Australia. It's truth. Well, at least in broad Australian English. A similar Crikey. word is... Crikey. This is also used as an interjection to show surprise. But again, this is limited to broad Australian English. Unless someone's taken the piss. Taking the piss. Just Cultivated it, Australian right? English is spoken by less than 10% of Aussies. Non-Aussies might mistake it for British received pronunciation. It has many fewer obviously Australian Probably features. Probably more posh. General yeah. Australian English is spoken by the majority of Aussies and is somewhere between the two. These different varieties of Australian English are not regional. For the most part, it's hard to tell the difference between people from Brisbane, Melbourne, Sydney, and other cities based on their accents. This is a different, this isn't us saying that because I can, I can already hear it. It's just like coming to the US and saying, the South and the New England area, right? And then somebody from California, or you know, there. I mean, even within the South, you can tell somebody's from Georgia, based off of that Georgia, that that uh, Georgia peach. Yeah, uh, and if they're from Mississippi. You can't even understand them. Yeah, or Kentucky has a very deep Southern draw, and they're all different. They might sound the same if you're from a different country, but I feel like within, if you live here, we can. Yeah kind of like usually you're just like where are you from like we know you're not from texas if you have that accent right so yeah because people think texas is like super southern and everybody ha has an accent which some parts of to texas certain, yes yeah but you have to be out in the country mostly yes but hey y'all how y'all doing a lot of people put that on older generations oh yeah in this area are like that yeah hey y'all how y'all doing y'all want to come on over to my house so we can have some briskets and gravy like people that i hang out with at my apartment complex they're oh uh 
I mean, they're yeah. they have southern accents, some pretty deep ones, yeah. But yeah. they're older, right? But that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, like I feel like that's kind of went away as as the, the generations, the generations and the cities have grown and everything. Yeah, I don't have an accent. Some people also argue that there's a fourth accent, the accent of the outer suburbs of major cities, which developed among communities that have immigrated <clears throat> to Australia since the Second World War. This kind of accent is often perceived as an immigrant accent, though it's spoken among the children and grandchildren of immigrants and crosses ethnic boundaries in those neighborhoods. Most of the examples after this point in the video will be more or less general Australian English. Spelling. Australian English normally follows British spelling conventions so rather wrong. than American. That means, in words like organize and authorize, the ISE spelling is normally preferred to the IZE -E spelling. Words like color and flavor are spelled with O-U-R mm -hmm. rather than O-R. Words like center and liter are spelled with R-E rather than E-R, and so on. The reason why American English uses different spellings from British English is because of because Noah we Webster, to just be whose dictionary published in 1828 chose certain variant spellings to be the American ones in order to make American English distinct. Yeah. This was specific So the creator the of the Webster Dictionary... This is such a game changer, guys. I'm going to switch the R with the E. <laughs> I'll be honest. It it makes no sense to have uh, have the R before the E. It does if that's how you learn it. No, 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 no. But as far what what is it called when it when it sounds the way you spell it? It's uh, I can't even think of like you spell it the way it sounds. Like if you uh, yeah no I know what's what, the, what is that term? What is the word? I can't even think of it. I don't know. But uh, it doesn't make sense because it'd be er, not re. I don't know. The U.S., so it didn't affect Australia. Pronunciation. Australian accents are R-less accents, or non-rhotic accents, meaning that the R sound is not pronounced at the end of a syllable or word, unless there's a word beginning with a vowel after it. This is the same as in most accents of England. For example, care. Compare that to my rhotic Canadian accent. Care. 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 I don't care. He really don't emphasizes care. that art. Care. Different accents of English are mainly distinguished care. by differences in vowels. And that's the case with care. Australian English. For instance, Aussie English basically has two A sounds, A and A. Some words are pronounced with A in both Australian and North American English. For example, cat. 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 Nap. Nap. But other words that I would pronounce with an A sound are often pronounced differently, with a long A in Australian English. For example, Bath. Bath. Laugh. Laugh. This is because of a split that occurred in the early modern Laugh. English vowel, a. Ah. In southern England, the sound began to change to a long ah sound, as in father, before certain sounds. This is referred to as broad a. This change made its way to Australia, but the vowel became a central vowel rather than a back vowel, ah. This is getting Laugh. confusing now. I am so lost. <laughs> This distinction is not used across the board in Australian I forget, English, though. It has I forget what this is called, but it like accents or uh, 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 the proper way, uh, enunciation, like uh, breakdowns or whatever you want to call it. Well, so as I understand, this is ah, ah, and then the other one's ah, ah, a long a, or a long a would be a. So ah, ah, uh, but I don't know. I don't remember. Well, the other one that was ah uh, was this one. He just brought this out. This is new. This is so in-depth. Just keep on going. Most influence in South Australia. The most noticeable feature of Australian English pronunciation is probably its diphthongs. Diff An Australian greeting I'm sure you've heard mate. is... Good eye, mate. Or... Good eye, mate. Good eye, mate. It's really only Aussies who use this as a greeting. But if I tried to say it, it would sound like, Good day, mate. <laughs> Listen to Good the day, the mate. Good day, mate. I do that to uh, to our detail crew and stuff at work. Good day. I think I've heard you say that. There, really. Well, no, I'll say, come away, stars. Oh, Mui yeah. bien, E2. Just but like it's, like just messing with really them. Really enunciate. Because Spanish, Spanish. I, I just try and make it sound as American white. as possible. Yeah, as white as possible. Hola. Hola, como away stars. Yeah. I say white, but there's white people like, in Mexico, too. You've got a good, you've got to get Spanish play on it what yeah. is hola como estas supposed to sound like hola como estas hola como estas muy bien y tú the vowel sounds good day good good eye. Eye. mate 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 the word day is not to be confused with the word die die 
The equivalent of American and British I is oi. For example, price, price, price. hide, hide. There's also like a different that. Australian oi. pronunciation oi. of the diphthong that I would pronounce as ow. Oi. Australians say something like ow, how, how, downtown. 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 That's hard. There's also a diphthong that I pronounce as oi. Australians say something more like oi. Boy. Boy. The Aussie sound is less open. Boy. Another is the diphthong o, as in boat. Australians say boat. boat. There are some characteristic features of intonation that in should Australian. Be like, that, that sounds Canadian. Boat. Boat. But, uh, what do they say? Uh, Shrimp um, on the worry. No. No, the 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 Canadians, uh, on a b- a boat, a boat about a boot, a boot. I'm a gonna boot. go right on the boot. Hey, hey, I'm gonna go right on a boot. Hey, a boot. Hey, English. One such. What are you talking about? Called high rising terminal. This means that Australians often say clauses within a statement with intonation that rises at the end. Like a yes or no question in North American no? or British English. <laughs> in the following example, you can hear it at the end of the first clause. Uh, met Robbo down the park. Um, then we met up with a couple of mates and uh, played a bit of footy. Huh. This kind of intonation is standard food? in Australia. These days, you might hear it sometimes in North America and the UK as well, though a lot of people find it annoying. <laughs> you might hear it referred to as up talk. Vocabulary. While the vast, vast majority of Australian English vocabulary is the same as in other varieties, it does have its own word preferences, as well as words and expressions that are uniquely Aussie. The most famous Aussie phrase just might be, G'day mate. Good on, mate. As we heard before. Just like in the UK, Aussies often refer to friends as mates. As in the UK, the word mate is used in contexts where North Americans would say friend, or maybe man when addressing someone casually. But unlike in the UK, in Australia, mate is not limited to casual situations or to your peers. You can use it with older people or people with a higher rank or position than you. This reflects the overwhelmingly casual nature of Aussies and the way they communicate. To inquire about someone's well-being, you might hear them ask, Hey, how you going? As a North American, this sounds strange to my ears. We ask, how's it going, rather than how are you going? Similarly, when you apologize, an Aussie might say, you're all right. Rather than that's all right, which is what See, I, I say. I say you're all right. You're all right. Yeah. So do I. You're all right. No, he's saying to respond to an apology. Like oh. if somebody's saying, "I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that," I'll say you're all right. Yeah. But you're so, right. but that's so he's saying he would normally say that's all right or that's okay. I typically say we good. We good. Even right? with strangers, like I'm like you're all right. Yeah. No, I say we good. I don't, I'm, I need to start saying it in the Australian accent, though. You all right? An Aussie might say, you're, you're right, rather you're than, right. that's you're all right. right, which is what I would say. You sound like the first a baby. time I heard yeah. this, I was confused. Like, why are you telling me I'm all right? Another expression that's likely to confuse us North Americans is, she'll be right, mate. Who's she referring right. to? Well, no one. It's referring to she'll the situation. Right, I would say, it'll be all right, or it'll be fine. What they really mean when is Aussies shit'll be all right. Shit's you might fine, hear them bro. say, Oi. I would say, hey, instead. Oi, Oi mate. Hey, man. Fair dinkum. Or just dinkum. This expression means genuine, honest, or true. It can also be used dinkum. as a question. Fair dinkum. For real? <laughs> and it can be used fair as an dinkum. adjective to describe someone. He's a fair dinkum Aussie. This is like saying, he's a true Aussie. I've come across a couple of possible etymologies of this expression. One of them states that it comes from a dialectal word of England, this guy dinkum, meaning hard work. Another etymology states that it comes from Cantonese, which was spoken by prospectors in the early gold mines. Dingam, meaning real gold. Though I tend to think the first etymology is the correct one. Remember that sentence from a moment ago? He's a fair dinkum Aussie. Well, we could expand that a little. He's a fair dinkum, true blue true Aussie. Blue. Mate. Mate. <laughs> he laughed say, at the end He's mate. a real genuine Aussie. True blue. This phrase is kind of like fair dinkum, meaning true, as in genuine, but also has the meaning of loyal. And to all the people with that positive personality trait, I say, Good on ya. Good on ya, mate. Good on ya is what Aussies say when they want to show they're impressed or they respect something good you've done. I would probably say, nice work or good job. From what I understand... I'm going to start using some of this. Good on ya. Well, we use true blue, 
Yeah, and we say good for you. Good for you. But our our usage of true blue, I believe, is actually derived from the colors of the flag. He's yeah. a true blue American. And when we say good for you, nine times out of ten, it's sarcasm. Say that one more time. When when we say good for you. At least, oh, yeah. At least, good for you, bud. At least coming out of my mouth, nine times out of ten, it's sarcasm. Good, I'm so proud of you. Good for you. It's kind of like, I don't know if you guys have ever heard the term, you want a cookie? But it's kind of like Congratulations. that. Like, like just being you brag a dick. about something and then you're like, good for you. Yeah, you're just like, fuck you. I just, I'm proud of what I did. And yeah. You just bel- belittled me. Good on you comes from Hiberno English. That is Irish English. Note that good on you can be used both sincerely and sarcastically. For example, let's say I'm bragging about how much of a pimp I am and how I scored last night. You're right, I'm right, I'm right. Good, good on, on you. When you say thanks, an Aussie might reply with, so that was No worries. Problem. Which is like saying no problem or don't worry about it. No worries can also be used in response to an apology. No worries. No I worries say that. is a way of life in Australia, Australia and something of a sense. national no worries, motto. Bro. Aussies tend to be light-hearted and not take things no too seriously. Nada. But if you're one of those people who tends to complain no or pasa. sulk, or if you're easily offended, you might be called a sook. Or as an adjective, sooky. Aussies love to use diminutive <laughs> words, snooky, bro. special forms of words that show endearment. This is usually done through shortening a word and adding a special suffix to it. Afternoon becomes... Avo. This afternoon this becomes... Avo. This avo. Or... Savo. Barbecue becomes... Barbie. Mosquito Hold becomes... Hold on, Sarvo, mo- not to be confused with Servo. Right? The Servo is the yeah, gas Yeah, Servo is the petrol station. Petrol, listen to you. Z. Football Futebol. becomes... Footy. Cigarette becomes... Siggy. Sandwich Sand- becomes... Oh, Sanga. Sanga. Postman becomes... Posty. Garbage man becomes... Garbo. <laughs> That's Christmas horrible. becomes... Chrissy. <laughs> We Why? use Garbo. We use Garbo, but it's like I've never heard of that. Oh, you've never heard that? No. It's like in gaming, like playing video games. Bro, bro that's you're so Garbo. Garbo bro. I've never heard of that. But that's horrible because you're calling somebody garbage. Choco biscuits. Biscuit. Chucky oh. Bicky. You dumb. All right, let's see if we can guess the next Chucky one. Chucky Bicky. Service Servo. Servo. Becomes. Servo. And that's for a service station, meaning a gas station or petrol station. McDonald's. Maccas. Maccas. Becomes Maccas. And, and you guys actually have it on your sign. Isolation ISO. becomes <laughs> as in quarantine due to COVID-19. How'd you go, you nice? There are also some words in Aussie English that originate in Aboriginal languages of Australia. One example you might hear, in particular in broad Australian English, is hard yakka, which means I was about hard, to say work. hard worker. Yakka is a word from the Yagara language, which used to be spoken in the Brisbane region. This word made its way into Australian English through the English-based pidgin language that was originally used between European settlers and aboriginals. Mm. That pidgin later developed into Australian Creole, which is still spoken by around 20,000 people today in the Northern Territory. There are some other Australian well- Australian Creole. Our Creole is different. Also spelled different. Well, ours is spelled with a C, right? Yeah. C R E A. O L E O L E, which yeah. is just somebody that's like uh, Cajun, Cajun, right? Yeah, or or it's Creole. It's the ling- It can be language as well because they have a Creole language. Yeah, they, they've they, well even in like Louisiana, Southern Louisiana, they have different words that are used. Yeah, that but it's Creole. Don't make yeah that don't make sense. For I wonder people. if it's co- uh, connected in any way. I don't know. No nouns that represent specific things in the Australian environment, like dingo or boomerang, which come from the extinct Darug language, Ooh. which used to be spoken in the Sydney area. Wait, wasn't the Australian boomerang English like one of the first the Australian as... words? Yeah, um, it was the. What was it? Boomerang was. We learned that it was the, the first video. word that was created by Australians, I think. Like, the first word to be entered into, like, the English dictionary, but by Australians. Well, by the Aboriginal. Aborigines. Right, but what I'm saying is, it wasn't entered into the English dictionary till uh, the, tra- the the Aussies we know today. Or whatever. 
I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I know that. It I know that that the boomer that boomerang is one of the oldest has, words. It has some sort of significance in yeah Australian language. As other varieties of English, but with their own accents, vocabulary, and attitude that reflect the laid-back nature of Aussies. Endearing and friendly are two words that come to mind when I think of Aussies and their way of speaking English. Oh, one final feature of Australian English that we can get into is their extremely liberal use of the word Capital C. Though YouTube might ban me if I talk about that, so maybe I should just move on to the question of the day. For speakers of Aussie English, I'm sure there are heaps of Aussie words and expressions that I didn't have time to mention in the video. So what other ones would you like to add? Write them we in don't the know. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to answer Now, that. I'm assuming he's call saying the word with the capital C that Jim Jeffries uses a lot. Or the F word. Nah, that's... that's. Shoot, people here use that liberally. Go to our... Yeah, you go guys, to our I, I have, yeah, I have noticed that, that the C words used quite frequently. It's one of my favorite words. I use it a lot. I, within friends i don't think i've i think i've used it one time in my life it's a, here at least in the u.s it's such a deep cutting word and that's what i like about it i think i've used it one time in my entire life yeah i think we just need to and i was i was very angry oh i don't have to be angry i love the word i said it i can say it I when i'm talking to you it. like a good thing like you my dude or you're my homie or whatever. I I would use that word it too. Out of I just spite because I think that word is just so spiteful. <laughs> it's it's mean. It's it cuts fucking deep. Yeah. So yeah, no, I get it. But this was way more in depth than I was anticipating. Yeah, this guy. I mean, he's got to be some type of like linguist or professor, uh, etymologist. Um, yeah. Or something along those lines. Yeah. This was really informative yeah. and really Potato, cool. Potato, steel fabric, and 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 and. Majestic AF. This was in depth AF. Yeah, no crap. So. But guys, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. Before I say that, actually, give us some more. Uh, Before he says that, I'm wearing a, a Don Adventure shirt. I shouted him out in our last Australian video, but I feel like shouting him out again. Shout it out. Shout it out. Don Adventures, an up and coming Australian YouTube channel. But we want more suggestions. Yeah. Throw that in there too. Yeah, throw some more suggestions. Uh, throw them in our Discord. The link's in the description. Subscribe to Don Adventures if you guys like the homeland that is Australia. He does post some pretty cool content of uh, just nature and, and being outdoors and everything in Australia. Um, yeah, so you can go ahead and finish up what you were saying. But guys, if you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. It helps us out a ton. If you want to see our future videos, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification. And if you want to support us directly, hit that join button. And with that being said, my name's Miles. My name's Fez. Thanks for watching, mites. Peace. Out.